live. Um, yes, I am now live, Willie. Um, okay, so let's. Um, what I wanted to do was to talk about, uh, or start doing anyway, was to talk about uh, one of the problems uh, that I gave you guys that is especially exciting, uh, I think. And uh, this was number um, 11, I think. Yeah, number 11 on the optimization uh, stuff. So the the setup was, uh, so optimization, optimization, hwork number 11. Uh, so the setup was we had, um, two points, one of which was uh, five units away from A and the other was two units away from B and then the distance between A and B was three units and then the idea was that if we pick some random point that's between A and B uh, and then connect that to, oops, that was terrible, uh, connect to those two points then we have some angle there theta and we want to maximize the angle theta. Okay, so uh, let's see how we could do that. Um, so at first glance, uh, what's tricky about this is we need to come up with sort of the key equation that relates theta to all the other uh, variables in, in the, the problem. And um, maybe the first thing we should do is let's call uh, the distance, so they call the point P, whatever that is. Uh, we need to choose uh, a variable to represent the distance between either A to P or B to P. It doesn't matter. So I'll put X there to be the distance between B and P. So that part. And then, uh, so if that's uh, X, then this part would be 3 minus x. Uh, you could have labeled it the other way. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so what that uh, gives us then is we've got two right triangles, and I'll sketch both of them separately. So we've got this one, which has x2, and theta is this angle there, and then the other one 3 minus x, 5, and so on. Okay, um, so what I'm going to do is rather than thinking about the angle theta, so let me erase this, rather than thinking about the angle theta, I'm going to think about what's not the angle theta. So I'm going to think about this angle, and I'll call that theta 1, and I'm going to think of that angle, and I'm going to call that theta 2, and then the angle theta is, of course, that part. Now, um, I know, because I have a straight line here, that theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta has to equal uh, 180 degrees, or pi radians, uh, if I want to work in radians. Um, and so if I want to maximize theta, then that would be equivalent to minimizing, minim, if it would help if I could spell minim, 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 bleh. it's too early for spelling, um, min, let's try this again, minimize theta 1 plus theta 2. So the smaller I make the sum of theta 1 and theta 2, the bigger that theta itself can be. Uh, knowing that they all three of them have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so that maybe is sort of the first um, first little bit to, to crack this problem open. Um, then the second thing we need to do is, well, we need to relate theta 1 and theta 2 to our variable x. 
And in each of the triangles, we can do that without too much trouble because the tangent of theta 1 is 2 over x, and the tangent of theta 2 is 5 over 3 minus x. Um, so that gets us a relationship between theta 1 and theta 2 and x, but what we really want to work with is not the tangents of the angles, but the angles themselves. Well, fortunately, that's not too bad. We can always just solve for theta 1. It would be the arctangent of 2 over x, and theta 2 would be the arctangent of 5 over 3 minus x. Okay, so let's let um, t equal theta 1 plus theta 2, which would be these two arctangent terms, like so. Uh, okay, so any questions up to here before we start throwing the calculus at it? So uh, type in the chat if you've got a question or Discord chat. Um, What's capital T? Uh, I'm just calling T the the sum of those two angles, so I could have called it F for whatever. Um, T, capital T, is the thing that we want to minimize. Um, so I just chose capital T basically completely arbitrarily as a, as a name. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, great. So I want to minimize t, and by minimizing t, I'll maximize theta. Uh, okay, so if we want to minimize this, well, first off, let's, um, let's go back up and let's uh, say, what are our range of x's? Um, well, here, x clearly has to be between 0 and 3. Uh, because the point P has to be between A and B. That was sort of a restriction in the problem. Um, okay, so um, so let's throw the uh, the derivative at this and see what we get. Now, just just by way of um, reminder, Uh, we've got the derivative of arctangent is that, and um, so t prime here would be uh, 1 over 1 plus 2 over x squared times the derivative of 2 over x, which is minus 2 over x squared, plus the other term, which is going to be 1 over 1 plus 5 over 3 minus x squared times the derivative of that term, which would be 5 over 3 minus x squared. Okay, and you might ask, where did the minus go? Well, really, there is 1, but I have to multiply by negative 1 because of the chain rule, and so the, the minuses are going to cancel. Okay, so for 8 in the morning, that's probably a little little rough, um, and the algebra is going to kind of stink here, but um, yeah. Okay, so any any questions so far, or with, uh, with the derivative term? No, 
Okay, you good, Willie? Um, okay, so this we need to set equal to zero, um, which is going to kind of suck from an algebra standpoint. Um, so, um, but let's just uh, dive in and do it. Um, for the sake of, of time and simplicity, I'm actually going to switch over to um, Mathematica, and that will be helpful for a few other reasons in a minute. Um, so let me switch the source on OBS, Mathematica. Okay, hang on. Okay, so... Um, so I'm going to come in here and let's define our function um, to be arctan of um, 2 over x plus arctan of 5 over 3 minus x. And then we can double check our derivative and uh, that looks like what we had. Um, they just put the terms in the opposite order, um, no big deal. Um, and then we want to solve that thing for uh, when that equals zero. So I'm going to do solve t prime of x equals zero for x, and we get uh, these two answers. Um, and so what we need to do is kind of think about which one of the answers makes sense. Maybe both of them do. Um, and uh, now, if you think about it just for real quickly, the first term here is negative, right? And so that would be the situation where uh, the point P is not between A and B, uh, which we said it was supposed to be. So that tells us to throw out the first, uh, the first answer and only to take the second one. And just for edification, there's the approximate numerical values of those things. Okay, so uh, we got our critical point was when x was, um, uh, I'll write it this way, negative a half um, plus two square roots of five made t prime equal to zero. Um, okay, but we really have three values of x that we need to consider because we also have the fact that we're working on a closed interval. Okay, so I need to consider what is t of um, negative a half plus two square roots of five and also what are t of zero and t of three. Now it may be just looking at the picture would make sense that t of 0 and t of 3 are probably not the droids we're looking for. Um, those are probably not going to um, uh, be the optimal points of interest, but we still need to check them because they're endpoints. Okay, so I want to check t of 0, t of 3, and also t of... Um, this number, the, our critical point, okay, and we get that. Okay, now, um, why did we get indeterminates for two of these? Well, let's go back up and look at our picture, or, I mean, our, uh, our the definition of the arctangent stuff. Yeah, I know, you're still on the Mathematica screen. We're supposed to be, right? So, uh, 2 over x, well... Uh, if x is 0 or 3, then our picture that we had, we have to redraw. Okay, so let me go back to the iPad for just a moment. Um, so if we come up here, um, looking at our picture there, if x is either 0 or 3, we have to redraw the picture and sort of start over. Okay, um, we can't use the arctangent formula that we had a minute ago. All right, so let me come down here and let's, um, let me actually erase this. Let's consider the case where x is 0. If x is 0, then that means that the uh, 
we have basically just the giant triangle at the bottom, which would be 3 here and 5 there, and then theta 1 would be that quantity. Theta would be the leftovers um, over, um, well, actually, no, I'm sorry, uh, because we still have the point that's here. So theta 2 would be 0, and theta would be this little bit in there. Um, and uh, sort of from the geometry of it, theta 1, tangent of that, would be uh, 5 thirds, and theta would be uh, 90 degrees minus the arctan of 5 thirds. Um, and we can look numerically sort of what that is in a minute. Similarly, if x is 3, then we have this sort of other situation where we'd have theta 2, or I'm sorry, I drew that, that wrong. Uh, we'd have, um, I don't know, wait. Uh, we'd have this triangle where this was theta 2, that would be theta, oops, just theta, and then we'd have 3 here and 2 there, so tangent of theta 2 would be um, 2 thirds, and theta would be 90 minus that. Okay, so those are our two sort of endpoint, um, um, our two endpoint uh, values. And then the other one that we need to consider is if x equals the negative a half, or I'm sorry, not negative a half, um, that should have been negative 2, I think it was. Um, yeah, my bad, guys. Um, so this should have been negative 2, not negative a half. Okay, uh, so that would be the other situation that we need to consider. Um, okay, so let's go back over to Mathematica and uh, see what we've got. All right, so on Mathematica, um, this is the, uh, the value of theta 1 plus theta 2, and so the pi minus that is the, um, the value of theta that we were interested in, and if we run that, of course, nothing happens because Mathematica is treating these as exact quantities. Um, so what I can do is I can get have it give me a 10 decimal point approximation, um, and uh, that gives me um, the value of theta, which seems a little bit too big. Um, that's interesting. Um, what about the other two values while we were at it? So those were um, pi pi halves minus arctan of 5 thirds was one of them. Oops, it does help to type correctly. There we go. Um, and the other one was pi halves minus arctan of 2 thirds. Okay, which are those two numbers? Uh, and then uh, these are all expressed in radians, which is perhaps a little bit unsatisfying. Um, so um, the um, oh, sorry, I know why this this other one was wrong. I need to subtract here because I'm subtracting the sum of the two quantities. Okay, that looks more reasonable. 
Uh, okay, so all three of these values are expressed in radians, not in degrees. And these are all the values of theta, uh, not theta 1 plus theta 2, because I've subtracted off those values. Uh, and just looking at it, it's perhaps clear. Oh, sorry, the dog's going nuts. Hang on one second. She's getting kicked out. Um, so the the quantities that we've plugged in there uh, are the values of theta, uh, not theta one and theta two, uh, because we want to um, we want to minimize theta one plus theta two so as to maximize theta, uh, and uh, it's pretty pretty clear looking at the numbers there that this one is uh, the the 0.99 whatever uh, just barely beats out the 0.98 blah 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 uh, and then the 0.54 one is going to be uh, looks like sort of a, a local or global minimum um, now those are maybe a little bit uh, unsatisfying uh, those numbers um, because of course they're in radians so let's convert them into degrees and the way that I can do that is of course just to multiply by 180 over pi and then I'll do the same thing to the other two guys Okay, so I get 57-ish uh, degrees, 30-ish um, degrees, and then 56 point whatever-ish degrees um, for um, my various values there. Okay, so, um, so what we got here was that theta was uh, the, the maximum we ended up with 57.053 three degrees or uh, whatever that was in radians um, yeah uh, okay so um, and now that corresponded to in the problem they didn't actually ask us for the values of theta 1 and theta 2 what they asked us for was the value of X and the magic value of X the one that minimized or sorry, maximize theta, but minimize the other two was uh, that guy um, there. Um, okay, so does that make sense um, so far? Gucci or Prada? Okay, what doesn't make sense, Mr. Bacon? Oh, okay. So why did I use pi over 2 for the second ones, but not pi for the first ones? Okay, to answer that question, we have to go back to the picture. Uh, so let me switch back to the iPad. Uh, yeah, because you're right. It looks like I ought to have used, I used pi in one case, but pi over 2 in the others. Okay, and the reason uh, is to, if we go back to the picture here, um, so if, if this point P were where B is, or if the point P was where A is, then our sort of two triangles together would collapse to be, um, well, like, let's say that the point B were right there. Well, then the triangle I would draw would be this one, and then the top triangle would really just be that straight line. Okay, and there would be no um, no in-between bit. 
Okay, so actually I've got an idea. Let me um, let me switch to uh, a different app here and then uh, make a better picture. And sorry for the the uh, camera inception here. Okay, so I'm using a, an application called GeoGebra here, and I'm just going to make a quick sketch. So if I've got the point A here and B is three units away, and then we go five units this way and two units that way, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to get rid of my axes and my grid, and I'm going to draw segments from there to there and change the labeling. OK, I'm going to have a segment that goes from A to B. I'm going to pick a point on it at random, and I'll rename that point P. And then I'm going to draw a segment from here to here and a segment from there to there. OK, now I'm going to define the angle. Oops, I need to do it in the other order. OK, um, and let me zoom in a little bit too. OK, so there's the setup that we've got, right? And um, for the other two uh, angles, let me go ahead and draw those in. We've got theta 2, oops, other way, which is this one, and theta 1, which is this one. And uh, let me move the, the labels so that it's a little bit more readable. OK. So um, the, the angle, um, if I move the point P, right, we want to find the point along here where the value of alpha, which actually, let me rename these um, to, so that they're the same as the problem. And I called this one theta 2, this one theta 1. Oops, no, I'm sorry, that one should have been theta. And then this one was theta 1. OK, so um, got the two, the three angles there. OK, so if, um, if, if I have a point P that's not in a stupid spot, then uh, how do I compute theta? Well, the entire angle that goes from, uh, because alpha, or sorry, A to B is a straight line, is 180 degrees, and so theta uh, plus theta one plus theta two have to add up to 180 degrees, or pi hat, or sorry, pi in radians. Okay, but the pi halves come in when I'm doing the stupid situation, where if p is actually at b, then the angle theta one disappears. Okay, and th then theta and theta 2, what do they add up to uh, in this case? They add up to 90 degrees, not 180 degrees. Okay, does that make sense? Why it's uh, 90 in that situation and not 180? And it's the same thing, by the way, if I drag the point P down here to A. Okay. Uh, then theta 2 disappears. Okay, good. So um, now the, the optimal point that we're looking for is somewhere in between. And uh, what did we get in degrees for this? It was like uh, 
like 60-ish or 50, well, let me go back to Mathematica, um, 57 degrees roughly was the optimum. And if I just kind of drag um, the point P around, then we kind of see, all right, what were we trying to do? We were trying to maximize theta, right? So at this end, theta is like 30 degrees, okay? At that end, it's 56 point whatever degrees. And then if we kind of mess with it, we can maybe f figure out that, oh, okay, it's getting slightly bigger. 57.05 seems to be about the maximum, and it occurs roughly there. Um, and then it starts to shrink again back down to, um, to whatever. And that makes sense, because what did we find in Mathematica? Um, we found that our maximum for theta was the 57.053 degrees, okay, and uh, back to the diagram, that would be when we're in sort of the configuration uh, roughly, right, oops, just slightly, right, roughly, uh, roughly there, okay, um, which is, uh, you know, kind of interesting. Um, so that's why it's um, pi halves in two cases, but pi in the other, um, just from the geometry of the problem. And then uh, the, the method of attack here was because in the diagram, there's not really any obvious relationship between theta and the quantities that were given, but there is a relationship between theta, uh, sorry, the, um, the supplement of theta which I split into theta 2 down here and theta 1 up there, um, just so that I could build sort of a triangle out of it. Uh, now, I suppose if you wanted, uh, you might have been able to go at this by, for example, connecting this thing here and then doing uh, some wizardry with, like, the law of cosines or something um, in that triangle, but uh, I think the approach we've taken here is is a, a little bit um, more straightforward. Um, okay, so um, yeah. Any questions on on this approach? And I can go back to the to the iPad or Mathematica, uh, whichever you guys need. Um, so just let me know what you think there. Um, uh, and just one thing to be clear, the answer, so to speak, that we were looking for here was the value of x that made all this happen, which was the uh, negative 2 plus 2 square root of 5 or whatever, uh, which is a much nicer number than the angles that we were getting here, but uh, right. Um, okay. So, uh, iPad, uh, can you do a quick recap, basically, like, right after the derivative of t? Yeah, all right, so let me go back to the iPad. All right, so, um, there's the derivative of t, right? So, uh, t on a, we have an optimization problem on a closed interval. So, we have to look at, any place where the derivative is zero that's on the inside of the interval and the endpoints of the interval, okay? Uh, so the derivative, we got that quantity there, uh, which is a little bit horrible. Uh, and we want to set that thing equal to zero. Now, uh, I cheated at this point just for the sake of, of time. Uh, to set that equal to zero and solve for x, it's not that hard to do it. Um, you just have to do some common denominator kind of action and maybe a little bit of cross multiplying. It's not going to be that horrible, um, but there will be a little bit of algebra. So, um, uh, so just for sake of expediency, I had Mathematica solve the equation for me. And so let me go back to it. And so that's what I did. Um, let me scroll up a little bit. That was that bit right there. Okay. So I have t prime is the uh, the big expression right above that uh, that we figured out 
by hand and it matched up and I just said hey Mathematica solve for when t prime is zero and give me the answers and uh, that thing is really a quadratic equation once you sort it all out uh, and which gave us two answers the first one this guy um, we said was ridiculous because that's or no sorry the first one that's no no that's the bad one right because this quantity in parentheses is negative and that makes the whole x negative and that doesn't make sense because that uh, because the point uh, P had to be between A and B, not outside of the them. Okay, so uh, so we threw out that answer, and then this one was the only one left, and that's the one that we were considering. Okay, and so then I wanted to figure out well, what angle went with both of those things, um, or all three of those things, which is when we did the all this uh, arcane arctangent wizardry uh, to get our uh, values of theta that went with each um, each value of x and then we're just picking well which one gives us the biggest theta and by kind of a hair it was the uh, the 57 whatever degrees which occurred when we looked at um, when x was this um, this number there the the negative two plus red uh, two red five okay um, right okay Gucci or Prada Gucci. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, what I wanted to kind of start talking about, um, and we'll we'll carry on with this on Friday and and a bit next week, um, is is actually to return to something that we had done. Um, well, it's been a little while now, so let me go back to the iPad for just a moment. Um, and. Um, so if we go back to something that we had done a while ago uh, were differential equations where we had something like dy dt is ky and um, that we found that the solution was y not e to the kt um, and uh, then we said that this was decay um, decay if k was less than zero and growth if k was greater than zero and so this was the sort of fundamental differential equation that was governing um, uh, when we did radioactive decay, we talked about half-lives, and we talked about Newt's law cooling, and bacterial growth, right? So sort of all of those things were uh, basically came down to that differential equation. Um, so what I wanted to do, though, was uh, to start talking about um, um, what are called vector fields, and uh, sort of start to look at how would we numerically solve a differential equation like this if we didn't know what the exact answer was supposed to be? Um, okay, so for that, I want to kind of go over to Mathematica and talk a little bit of the geometry here of this. Um, so let me come back over here. And what I'm going to do is, uh, f because I need uh, a... Uh, specific value of k, let me just choose k equals 2 for the sake of demonstration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a vector plot and the thing I'm going to put here is 2 times y and then I'm going to specify my range of t's and x's and 
I'll just do um, that um, part one of okay hang on one second what if I messed up oh yeah sorry okay there we go uh, so I have to put a one here at the beginning and uh, don't worry about that really right now um, okay so what do I get is this sort of um, bunch of arrows that maybe don't seem all that enlightening but basically what is being graphed here is at any point um, I'm going to draw an arrow that has slope dy dt all right now uh, for us dy dt is 2y and I picked the 2 simply because I have to have a numeric value for k um, so 2 is just whatever um, and so what is the slope of a line that has dy dt equal to 2y? Well, the, um, the slope would be 2y, and so the arrow goes one unit in the x direction and two y units in the y direction, uh, and so that makes the slope of it 2y divided by 1, which is our derivative okay so I had to put the one there basically for for some technical uh, reasons uh, okay now uh, I know that um, so at any point on here basically what Mathematica has done is it's divided up my window uh, into a bunch of points and then at each point it's gonna say all right so let me pick say this point here where my mouse cursor is um, which uh, doesn't look like you guys can see my mouse cursor all right well so let's take this sort of orange um, this sort of orange point uh, that are kind of in the middle of the screen so at all of those orangish points the T coordinates are whatever and the Y coordinates are like three ish all right, so then what Mathematica is going to do is it's going to take t equals whatever and y equals 3 and plug them in there. Now, because the t there's no t in the expression that I've highlighted, it doesn't matter what the value of little t is. Uh, it only matters what the value of y is, okay? So if y is 3, which is kind of in the orange uh, part of the, the picture, then uh, if I plug that in for y, I get 1 comma 6, which would be an arrow that has slope 6. And looking at the, uh, the sort of orange arrows there, 6 seems pretty plausible for their slope. Okay, whereas if I come down to the bottom where it's sort of blues and purples, the y values are rather small, and they... Um, that's where uh, the slopes are are smaller okay um, all right now um, let me actually make a minor tweak to the command that I'm used here uh, and I'm gonna call change this to stream plot I find stream plots to be much more satisfying and we get this okay so the idea here is uh, the what we're looking at is the solution or really all of the solutions to the differential equation there are infinitely many of them and there is one for each particular value why not okay so for example if I start with one um, one bacterial cell and the the growth is that it doubles after every um, time unit then I should end up at two bacterial cells after one unit of time okay and um, or sorry I've got the E in here um, all right so the solution that we would get, so let me define here, um, um, let's see, what do I want to call this? 
Um, I don't want to use y because I've used that as a variable. So let me just call it um, pop of t uh, equals uh, e to the kt. Okay, like that. And then I'm going to make a plot Okay, and so that will give me this sort of exponential looking plot there. And then what I'm going to do, this is kind of fancy, I'm going to call this P1 and that P2. And then I'm going to combine them like this, and that puts them on the same set of axes. Okay, so, um, so what we have is... The red line is the specific solution where our initial population is one uh, thing. And then all, all the other blue lines would be for other different initial populations. So if I pick a different initial population, then I would really be just following a different one of those blue kind of curves. And the red one is just the specific one that... Uh, matched the starting values uh, that I had here. Okay, so um, let me let me change the value. Okay, uh, and or actually I'll make a second one here. Uh, so let me um, let me make. Um, I'll basically just copy this, and I'll instead of pop t, I'll say. Let's start, say we start with 0.1 uh, thing, and then I'll make this one uh, green. And then, oops, I need to show uh, all three of them together. And that puts all three of them on the plot. Okay, so here, if I started with 0.1 uh, population, whatever that means, um, then... Um, the uh, the curve that I follow looks like the red one. It's just sort of shifted down a little bit, and um, uh, or over a little bit. You know, sort of depending on how you want to to think about it. And uh, so we get that green curve again, uh, but that's sort of following the streamlines there. Um, yeah. So essentially, all we're doing there is following the arrows. And um, maybe a way that you could think about this is so. Uh, since I guess you guys are used to me making movie references and lecture, how many of you guys have seen um, um, Forrest Gump? Sorry, it took me a brain fart. All right, so we've seen Forrest Gump. Oh, wow, somebody's actually seen a movie I'm referencing. Okay, so in Forrest Gump, there's the one of the threads that ties the whole movie together uh, is the feather that kind of flies around right in the wind. And so you could kind of think of the solutions to this differential equation uh, is if I imagined that this arrow pattern uh, here was kind of like the wind, and I drop a feather someplace and I let it follow the wind, then it's going to follow some particular path, whatever. And um, that particular path is going to be the solution using that initial uh, position or initial value. And that's exactly what, excuse me, goodness, um, that's exactly what we did here uh, with the red and the green curves. Those are starting with the initial values of. Uh, 1 or 0.1, okay, and I just picked those numbers at random, and the, so the red and the uh, green curves are just going to be the, um, the path that the feather would follow in the wind, or uh, what our solution to our differential equation is. Uh, okay, great. So um, we'll, uh, we'll kind of tie things off here. Any questions?
before I kill the stream. Cameron's typing something. Um, uh, okay, Cameron, I'll look at that in a second. It's possible that your numbers were different uh, or that I made some sort of stupid typo, uh, but I'll look at that in just a second. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, we'll, uh, we'll quit for today. And I'll see you guys on um, Friday, and we'll keep talking about this differential equation stuff. You can probably guess where we're going to go with that. Um, and um, if you got questions on the optimization or the related rate stuff, uh, uh, hit me up on Discord, and uh, we can take a look at it. So, all right, I'll go ahead and end the stream here. Uh, have a good rest of y'all's day.